99, where we focus on brewing a better competitive commander. I am your host, Patrick Marlatt. And I'm Justin Rodriguez, and this week is all about Narameha. So this episode is all about hands we should and shouldn't keep, notable exclusions, and cards that I feel are fantastic for our meta. Totally agree. Yeah, I can't wait to get to that portion, but we're going to start with that mull guide. Uh, so the basic way to do that, what we did with Savala, and what we'll do here is draw hands of seven to see if we like it, keep it, leave it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's begin with our first hand of seven. Okay, island, petal, island, land. More land. Wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... It, that shouldn't you know, even be included. That's terrible. Yeah, so <laughs> we wouldn't keep that hand. I would recommend not keeping that hand. Uh, why wouldn't you keep that hand? <laughs> Nothing but land, no payoff. If you saw that. So there's a Scorched Desert in the middle, and that's actually a win con for this deck. That is a fantastic card in, in this deck. <sighs> yeah, but it it's... It really is. Because when you loop that with Ghostly Flicker, you now have an infinite damage outlet. Exactly. Single target, but you do it as many times as you want, right? Yeah, I mean, what's important with Narumea is you want to hit that 8 mana, yeah. but you need hands that have interaction. We were so close to 8 mana, though. We really were. I know. <laughs> you can wait 6 turns in competitive. No, right? you can't. You, no? If you are not interacting by at least turn 2, yeah. you're failing with this deck. Yeah. You didn't even have a good way to interact. No, I had no interaction. So yeah, obviously we want to exclude that. 100%. Um, Let's try again. Okay, Factor Fiction, Annul, Island, Negate, Dispel... Island. Okay, this isn't horrible. You don't have any fast mana, really. But yeah. you do have a way to stop people from getting their rocks out. So I absolutely love Null. And yeah. this is more of a meta call for us. It really, really is fantastic against Shamevelt's Fairy. Yes. It's good against Shimmer's Air. Yes. Um, I have hit a lot of Necropotents. Mm -hmm. I, have lo I have hit um, Carpet of Flowers, which everyone uses against me. Yeah, I think people forget that Null also targets enchantments, so it's actually really multifaceted, and for one mana, that's pretty amazing. Now, but the, th the thing is, with Annul, though, I would only run it in a mono blue deck. I feel yeah. like when you go to additional colors, there are way better cards to There are better play. split colors. I'd rather run Tutors, Artifact yeah. Removal. This is just because we're mono blue, and mm -hmm. we need it in here. Yeah, so for Naru, it's perfect, and it's it's actually really good in, in composition with this hand. So we've got Negate, Dispel, yeah. we've got three islands per turn. Uh, per, well, our first turn. Well, let's see what the... Would you keep this, would you say? I would keep this. Um, I like that we're interacting early. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Um, and I do like we have that we do have a way to refill our hand yeah. with Factor Fiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's I would, I would keep this hand. Yeah. Yeah. Going first, going second or last, I would still keep this. So let's just say we've kept this. Obviously, we mulled one, so we yeah. get to keep a hand of seven. Let's see what's on top of the deck. See if it was a good choice. Mental misstep. Oh, that's excellent. So fantastic. I would yeah, keep that. I love mental misstep. This card, I mean, it's it hits so much stuff, especially in CEDH. The problem with this hand, though, is we are not progressing our game fast enough. No. So it was a good start of seven, but what are you hoping to draw into instead? I really want some fast mana with this. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is... This is really a tough call with this hand. I like it enough to keep it because I'm interacting early, mm -hmm. but... If we're not hitting that prerequisite of at least eight mana... Well, you've got Grim Monolith, Monovault, Basalt... Mox Diamond, when we have it all. Mox Diamond, yeah. So if you're looking at the list over on Tapped Out, you'll know you there know. are plenty... Plenty of... So we have a Cantrip on Ponder, our next turn. Metabolic. And then we Now, now so, we're getting into things. Yeah, and I think this still would have been good in holding other people down whilst working towards your yes. goal. Um, and then you can Factor Fiction very soon the after The problem this. with Mono Blue, though, is we have to really time our answers you know yeah. we can't just counter everything no like this mental misstep this annul this negate the dispel we can't be the reliable source of all encompassing yeah. counters we yeah. need to we need to jockey with the table exactly and see where you know where you lie in the priority order but sometimes someone will have an answer for you so keep your answers available mm -hmm. really play at the last possible moment, I think, is usually the goal for most players, even up so beyond too. blue. Just wait until you absolutely need to play it, uh, in particular when you're playing blue with instant speed cards like these. Um, but I agree with you. I think you're absolutely yeah. right. Because for... we, we can interact with everything, but yeah. we don't want to waste our resources. You yeah. know, we're a controllish deck. Mm -hmm. um, what that basically means in this format is we're trying to slow people down. We're not going to be able to. A control deck in this format means we're delaying the combo turn by maybe two yeah two two turns two at best 
and maybe one depending yeah. on what you actually did to your opponents and you know we were just test playing um my goto deck which we'll feature later yeah and it was interesting to see how far you could delay just mono we mono obviously oh, with the yeah, multi multiplayer board it would be much more difficult to do the things i was doing much more difficult for you to do the things you were doing but yep. It's interesting to see how much you can actually handle with these low cost spells. Yeah, but, I mean, you're not countering tutors. You're not no. countering. You're waiting for specific threats. You exactly. know, if they're going to drop a card, that's game winning. That is game winning. Yeah. Of course, counter it. Yeah. But wait to see if anyone else can interact first. Yeah, exactly. Um, so with that, why don't we go ahead and draw another hand of seven? I think we'll just do Try. two examples um, of this. So this is two more rather. Uh, so this is our first one, and it was okay. Not necessarily the exact start we want with Narumea, but it's a good taste of what we're going to yeah. be getting ourselves into. You know, I liked it just because it had some early interaction, mm -hmm. and you know, even if I had a hand with so much fast mana, it doesn't matter if I'm not interacting. Well, it's funny because if you watch our gameplay footage, you'll notice that Justin he kept a hand uh, and was, you know. It wasn't like a necessarily a bad hand, but he was yeah. punished for it, unfortunately, because it only had two islands, and I'm sure you were suspecting to draw more islands. It had two islands. I was really hoping I would draw in some more islands, and yeah. it did have a mana drain, which is fantastic. Mana that's that's probably the best card in the deck. Uh, yeah. It was a good hand, but it can show you that that gameplay footage will show you how wrong a good hand can go. Let's try again. With just poor draws. Uh, and so far, this is looking bad. There's one island. There's two islands. Okay. Don't you mock me. No, hey. No, no, no. You want to okay. see some mana quickly, but this is really good. Um, so why don't you explain some of these cards? Alter the Brood is a very yeah. odd one to so, see. So Alter the Brood is a very weird one in this deck. Um, we're going to talk about that in a few. Just because I feel like the Alter of the Brood line is better than the Illusionist Stratagem line. If you know how Naru yeah. traditionally wins, a lot of those earlier decks used Illusionist Stratagem. Yeah. Whereas Alter the Brood... Very undervalued card. I love low-cost artifacts that have um, symmetrical, and this is asymmetrical in this instance. You know, let's effects just, let's just talk about stratagem now. Yeah, what, yeah. what do we think of illusionist stratagem in 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 the back? What do we think about this card? Uh, it's a win condition. I like it. Um, but what's important to note with illusionist stratagem is when you cast this card, right? So three in a blue, and then you cast Narameha on top of that. It's a lot of mana. It's the prerequisite of eight mana, yeah. correct? But Normally I say 8 mana with the Ghostly Flicker line because I want at least one additional mana to hold, to for hold up for counter magic. Counter anything but like we that. can go yeah. off on 7 with Ghostly Flicker. A stratagem line goes off on 8. When you cast Illusionist Stratagem, you can exile up to 2 target creatures. Technically, you can say 0, mm -hmm. right? But if you say 0 and then you flash in Narumeha and Narumeha copies Illusionist Stratagem, the new copy of Stratagem will also say 0. So it wouldn't work. Not very good. No. So Illusionist Stratagem makes you have a creature on board, on the field. This deck only runs like five or six. Yeah. So you're not really going to have a great... You need at least one creature on the field as a prerequisite for this to go yeah. off. Is so what say you do, though. Yeah. Say you do. Say you do have that one you creature on the field. Spellseeker. Spellseeker. Yeah. Trinket Mage. Yeah. yeah. Those are great. Yeah. But let's say we did have it. And then we draw our, our entire deck. We now have to play out Fast Mana and Laboratory Maniac and Cantrip to win. Yeah. We cannot do that instant speed. Mm -hmm. We can do the stratagem combo instant speed, but we need to wait until our turn to play out everything yeah. and then go for that win. So, so we took a little bit of a deep dive there. This is obviously excluded in the list if you're looking over on tapped out. We're not saying it's bad for your list. Maybe your mm -hmm. meta allows for the stratagem to be a potential strategy. I think it's suboptimal. It is. It is yeah, a little suboptimal. But so far as this hand is concerned, and we'll jump back to Stratagem a little bit later, mm -hmm. I think, because there's actually a lot of notable exclusions in this deck. Yes. This is one of them, and I, I definitely agree that removing this was a smart idea. Um, but we'll, we'll get to that in we'll a few. I loved what Kaladesh, the whole block So what does offered. Alter of the Brood offer that Stratagem doesn't? Oof. It lets us go off on 5 mana instead. Mm -hmm. So You play this out early anyways. There's no, I do. It's of no offense to anyone. People are going to allow this to hit the field. So it's a great card in hand off the bat because a turn 1 island into Alter of the Brood, you're probably going to sense his Divining Top if we're being honest. So it's not good versus every deck. No. I mean, no. Shuffle Hulk might not care. Yeah. Githrog will definitely like be like, go for it. There's plenty of cards that just coincidentally have the effects that when they go into the graveyard, you shuffle your deck. So yep. milling people out isn't always a way to win. However, for a lot of decks, I mean, a lot of my decks personally, this gets me every time. Yeah, and so. we'll, we'll talk about Essence Lux because Essence Lux is the combo with Alter the Brood. Yeah. And with the two of those in Narameha, you can loop Narameha infinite times to infinitely mill everyone. It won't mm -hmm. work for every meta. 
you know, you have you will have Githrog, you will have Shuffle Hulk, mm -hmm. and I would say do not include this Alter the Brood line if you do. Yeah, yeah. But to go off on five mana is fantastic. So we're looking to keep this hand, I imagine. So we have Sleight of Hand, Anticipate. So I like this because it's a combo piece. Um, I love Flusterstorm, it's and great. we have two ways to refill. With a top, I would keep this hand. And what do we see on top? Sun's War Chaser. Hey, look, another win condition. Um, so this isn't bad. It's obviously an, another mana for turn three. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we would probably play top, honestly, first, and then potentially yeah. be able to see, at least on turn two, what the next three cards are. Um, so let's just imagine we go ahead and did that. No, Jay's Friend, Sapphire Medallion, Dispel. Yeah, so we don't have any of those fast it's mana not, sources. It's not a fantastic hand, no. but it, it is definitely a keepable hand, I would say. I think we would have kept this, and Jace would have been good to put on top there. Yeah. Um, and well, of these three, what would you have topped? Uh, I definitely want that Sapphire Medallion. So we have Dispel, Sapphire Medallion. Medallion yep. is obviously a cost redu uh, reduction card. You know, for, that is the best cost reducer in this deck because yeah. it makes our 7 mana combo a 5 mana combo. Oh, it's great. Knocking off one yeah. generic on Narameha, off one on Ghostly Flicker. Anytime you have great. a mono-colored deck, go for the Medallions. They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, you likely know what they are. They've been reprinted uh, once or maybe a handful of times. Um, I love the old They're, they're fantastic, though, especially if you're going to do a monocolored commander. Always go for the medallion. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. Either that or Jace. I, I don't know if you can actually flip Jace anytime So while soon. this is a slow hand, um, what I look to keep in Naramea is I want interaction and I want some way to dig and some way to refill my hand. Mm -hmm. And we have that. We have so got your, three like... pieces of refilling and digging and one form of interaction. Mm -hmm. Not bad. Not bad. And you would have gone this. into Dispel, too. So that's good. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. something like uh, Savala. Hmm. Something like Goto. We're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. in trouble. Yeah. I'm very excited to show you guys Goto, by the way. Um, we literally just play tested it one-on-one -on -one for the first time. I've been... I took a real crack at that deck. It's different from any primer you would have seen. And I'm really happy with where it's come. It's not a glass cannon anymore. Because everyone has this impression that Goto need be a glass cannon. Not the case. Talking about glass cannons... Lion's Ooh. Eye Diamond. What do we think about Lion's Eye Diamond and Nara? We'll get Before there, we even boy. start, okay. We'll get there, boy. Before <laughs> no, I say no. I'll, I say no in a lot of cases. I say no. I say um, no in a lot of cases. Do you want to? I want to discuss this now. Okay. So a lot of people use Lion's Eye Diamond in conjunction with losing his stratagem. And has strong feelings about it. Losing his stratagem. Okay. So I understand we want to get to 8 mana or 7 mana as quickly as possible. And Lion's Eye Diamond will take us there. Mm -hmm. But... If you like we, stabbing yourself in the foot. We cannot be a glass cannon deck in Narameha. No. If we activate Lion's Eye Diamond, not a typical thing to do is play out Lion's Eye Diamond, cast Illusionist Stratagem or Ghostly Flicker, mm -hmm. and then, you know, go ahead and crack crack LED. Lion's Eye LED, yeah. discard your hand, and with that mana, play out Narameha. We have now entered the Midnight Zone. Yeah. We have no hands. We are all in on this. And let me just say this. Does it resolve? Does it resolve, everyone? If we are using the subpar stratagem <laughs> and it resolves, okay, fine. We draw our whole hand and then we have to play out the lab man and the cantrip, whatever. But we're not using that. With Ghostly Flicker, right, mm. we now require an outlet on the field. We need that desert. We need the Gear Reach Sanitarium. We need Trinket Mage. We need Spellseeker. <laughs> we need something already there. Don't play your land this turn. Wait, wait for it. You know, we need something yeah. there to utilize that because we have no hand now. Mm -hmm. And while that can still work, I don't think it's good enough. And it leaves us counterless. Mm -hmm. You know, if we blitz out Lion's Eye Diamond and we go for our Wincon right there, we have no way to protect it. Yeah, I'll say generally speaking, LED, I think people over overvalue the card. And, and they yeah. use it in a lot of decks that don't really need it. My firm belief is if you're not using LED in a game-changing way, mm -hmm. in a way that's going to net you a win instantaneously, and while this demonstration here, yes, it could net you a it win, could. it is very, very breakable. Like you, You're setting yourself up for failure yeah. when you do this, and it cements your deck as a glass there's cannon. No, there's no coming back from this no. if you screw up. No, if you screw up, then it's but just as bad as getting Notion Thief. Would you run this in a non-blue meta? Uh, Hell yeah, it yeah, would. It would yeah. Oh yeah, it would. I would blitz that out as quick as possible. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. But what? how many times does that scenario pop up? That's Maybe right. your play group is really just like fast, aggressive. They like having a lot of creatures on deck. They like doing non-counter actions. They just want to see yeah. who can do it best, who can do it first. 
Um, there aren't that many people rocking those decks. There are some metas with non-blue. I'm in or, no, or blue light player. Or light, or light on blue. And yeah. in that instance, I would say, okay, I would run LED. It's great. I think in most instances, though, you're going to no, you're going to get run screwed it. by that. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and draw seven more cards. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of notable exclusions we want to go through here. Um, LED is one I'm going to recommend you just exclude in a lot of decks, unless yeah. your deck is really rocking LED for a win. And there's some. If you're doing Bomberman, if you're yeah. doing Reanimator, if you're doing Dodo. All right, let's go ahead and play another hand. Okay, we got our lands, we've got our Jace, Resident Jace. Island, this is looking okay, looking better. This is looking really good. So anytime you have Mana Crypt, odds are likely you're going to want to keep that hand. It is yes. the best fast yeah. mana I would keep in our format. I would keep so obviously you can see Mana Crypt going out, playing into Saffron Medallion. Our Into the Royal is now one mana. Our Anticipate's one mana. Our Jace is a turn one, J a turn one Jace. Why not? We have a looter, right? A little looty booty on the field Yeah. that flips and has really great abilities. This is a fantastic hand. This is exactly what Naru wants. So we're light on interaction here, yeah. but but we do have the into the into the royal here. Mm -hmm. Decent. Uh, what I like about this hand is anticipate is only going to cost one. It's mm -hmm. going to find us a piece of interaction, um, and then Jace every turn is going to loot, and we can have him out turn one. Mm. And I would. I think that would be the best. Obviously, this is the best bet. And hey, if you're using illusionist stratagem, you're set up. You got you got Jace now, unless he flips. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, still not a scenario you really want to go and into. And we would draw that. into a another land, <laughs> which is perfect. perfect because yeah. right now, for all purposes of this deck, Sapphire Medallion is basically having two lands when you're going for your combo. Yeah. We start off the beginning of the game with five mana yeah. towards our combo. We just need to hit two more islands. Oh, this is this is really good. We're, we're, we're in a good place. We're and Pluto Delta gets us the next island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So obviously you can see where this hand is going. It's fantastic. Of course, we discussed some of the win conditions in our uh, previous video. Obviously, we're not going to do that here mm -hmm. as there are multiple play lines. But of we course. have two right here. We do we have do. two. We have Into the Royal and the Gear Reach because we can loop both of these infinite times with Correct. infinite mana with the and go nuts. Yeah. So a lot of these cards, they're good on their own, but they are outlets for Narumeha. Am I wrong? You can bring Into the Royal back with Jace even. Sure. And he flips. Yeah. So why not? yeah, it's not like you lose that condition. Jace is very, very good to have early on, particularly because CDH notoriously doesn't really have that many creatures on deck. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you're playing against someone with Savala or someone with a bunch of dorks, you're gonna see some creatures, but as a planeswalker, he's probably gonna be untouchable for a good while. So you're very lucky, especially turn one, Jace. It's this is an excellent hit. Why not? Go yeah. for it. We know her, we love her. She's really fantastic Mono Blue Commander. However, she's not without fault, and some of these cards put her at fault. Now, yep. we've talked about a handful of them. We're going to redouble on some we've talked about, and also one more notable exclusion that is honestly not good, at least in our meta, through lots of testing. Yes, this is uh, very controversial. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about LED one more time. Non blue meta, fantastic. Blue meta, what are you doing? What are you doing? No. We're, we're going for a combo with no support. With no countermeasures. Blue's, like, best thing is to have cards in hand. It's like, you need interaction mm -hmm. to make your deck work. And you're saying no to that. There's no reason you should be stabbing yourself in the foot for LED. It. I mean, we do have plenty of outlets mm -hmm. that are already on board. That we can use it with when we go to a combo. And we have no hand. But mm -hmm. why gimp ourselves? I'm trying to think, you know, are there instances that you can have, what was that Spells Kite, the thing that counters or makes him the target of things? Could you do that? I mean, To what? Just to have on deck so that you could have a hand, have no hand rather. I'm trying to think of... No, because the, the biggest thing with Naramea, when people try to stop Naramea, is they're going to counter Ghostly Flicker. They're going to counter Naramea. They're going to kill Naramea when she enters the battlefield. We need some way to protect her. Yeah. Or protect her spells. Mm-hmm. LED defeats that purpose. Uh, and then in that same instance, Illusionist Stratagem falls out of favor in this deck as a win con. It is a big win con in a lot of Naru decks. We really don't recommend you do it, though. Just don't go the Stratagem you route. Know, I really do feel that Ghostly Flicker is the superior line because it can win anytime, anywhere, in response to anything. Stratagem cannot. Stratagem says, yes, you can go off the rails and draw your deck, but you're yeah. not winning until it's your turn. Yeah. 
It's not great. Two creatures you control. There isn't even utility outside of the combo. It's just a very over. It also requires you to have a creature on the field. Essence Flux does too, but it is useful outside of the combo. Which exactly. We will talk about. Exactly. And we're gonna discuss that card in just a moment. There's only one more notable exclusion we want to discuss. You want Time your deck to be over a thousand dollars? Is talk budget? a fantastic card. It is a power nine for a reason, and I totally can see its power. But more often than not, when I play this card, I lose. Yeah. And I lose to either a flashing in panty thief. Yeah. Little panty thief with the uh, yep, notion thief, notion yep. thief. and I get wrecked. Um, in mono blue, I am not looking to give my opponents a full grip of seven. No. It is so bad for me. I am trying to have the most cards. I am trying to counter. And yes, you can say, I want to refill my hand. I want to have more counters. But then you give everyone else a chance to win. Every time I play this card, I have lost. And do I play this card wrong? No. Maybe. Arguably. There are, there are times I played it wrong. Yes. Well, there's a game that was really it classic takes a lot of for skill. us where I had no way of winning playing Savala. I had two cards in hand. He plays Time Twister, and I pull into every solution, and I win okay. on the right. very post, next post Infinite Mana. If I have Infinite Mana off of Ghosty Flicker, yeah. this is incredible. I'm yeah. going to draw seven cards. I'm going to find an outlet. I'm going to win. However, any other time... It's not good. And I'll argue any wheel card, Wheel of Fortune, whatever deck you're running with a wheel, they're fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but only use them if you have the mana base left to support an additional play. And yes. only use them if, if you, you can know. abuse them, if you can exactly. loop them. Naru can't loop them. Laru, Naru cannot abuse them. Yeah. Um, can you just dump out your own whole hand really quick and then play Time Twister? Yes. Is that decent? Yes. More often than not, it's not working in your favor. Exactly. You're going to really stub yourself in the foot. And also, if you just want to bring down the cost of your deck, yeah. exclude Time Twister. <laughs> I would say 100%. With no budget, yeah. I would still not run this card. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Budget excluded. Obviously, when we discuss these decks, you know, we don't bring up... If you're going to play CDH... Uh, there is a, a, a proxy. barrier There's so no far as cost. One, yeah. <laughs> yeah, proxy it. Yeah. Proxy it. Proxy it. But we can definitely say this is an exclusion here. It's broken in a lot of decks, yes. not in Naru. And that's oh, yeah. the only reason you want to play this. All right, with Time Twister out of the way, let's go ahead and look at some of our notable inclusions. And there are a lot. Counterbalance. Ooh, you what, like? do, what do we think about counterbalance? First off, people will think that counterbalance is too slow for the meta. Do you agree? It, it, you know what? It depends on the deck, but... I can honestly say anytime Naru gets counterbalance out, I really want enchantment removal. I screw with everybody. Yeah. It's fantastic. Our deck runs 25 one drops, 26 two drops, and nine three drops. With 31 lands, that's already like 91 cards. Yeah. We're always hitting. We're always hitting zeros, ones, twos. And genuinely. Sensei's Divining Top. Exactly. Top deck manipulation. Like, this is fantastic. Exactly. You it just really see, like, oh, you're going to cast a what cost? A two cost? I'm going to use the top. And again, because you saw top on our list and you yep. see top on our tapped out primer. It is an amazing card in combination with this. But even by itself. Even by itself. I'm it's hitting threatening. all day. Because let's just pretend. Uh, let's talk about Goto. One of his great win conditions is that he can play Twin Flame into himself, creating a copy and then just going mm -hmm. off. It cheats our mana cost. It cheats the, our win condition effectively. Um, by, I don't know, what's the cost of equipping Helm? Five? Instead, you're just like, no, I'm just going to instant equip it. So you decrease it by three. You want to do that. So I played for two. His deck, in all likelihood, with just having this on the field, is probably going to stop Twin Flame. And it stopped a bunch of cards from our testing earlier. Even a basic island is going to stop your Mana Crypt. Yeah. Um, it's going to stop and your And it's always worth locks. checking. It's, it's always worth checking. It really is. Uh, well, almost always. If someone plays something that costs four, five, six, I'm not going to check. I don't, mm. want, I don't need to reveal the card. If you play a three cost, I may or may not check based on my dex ratios. But zero to two? All day I'm going to yeah. check. Yep. Yeah. And I'm hitting. I'm definitely hitting with So uh, if you balance. are going to go mono blue, I definitely would... Encourage you to consider a counterbalance. Obviously, you don't need to get this particular addition to the Mystical card. Mystical Tutor, Brainstorm. These, they're all Ugh. synergistic with counterbalance. So true. Yeah, this is so true. And you busy. Yeah, we have so many instant speed cantrips that just manipulate the top of your deck. Yep. Why wouldn't you want to use... Like, beyond Sensei's top. Why wouldn't I, you I, want I wouldn't run counterbalance in every deck, but our deck runs such a low curve. I think it's like 1.7. For Naru? For Naru. It's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah. Then it's yeah, it it's very sense. very useful. Cuz everyone's looking for those fast interactions, those low cost interactions, mm -hmm. and this shuts a lot of them down. I think it's heavily undervalued. I think it's great in mono blue and it's really good in Naru. It really Definitely is. a yep. must include. Let's right. go to the next card. Let's talk about Gilded Drake. Ooh. I don't see Gilded Drake used too much. And I think it's so good. I mean, I'm going to steal your yeah. Zer. I'm going to steal your Savala, mm -hmm. your Jorora, your partner. Like, I'm going to take it. I want Timna. And it's great. I want it. Yeah, I want Timna. Yeah. I'll use Timna. I really like Gilded Drake in this. So what, this guy is going to be salty. He's going to be striking you with a 3-3 three, three flyer. Is that, the, is that really a concern? No. 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 Has the Gilded Drake ever won a game? Like, yes. for the opponent? Yeah. No. Exactly. No way, no way. It's won a game for me. Exactly. I, exactly. Love, I love it. I think it's a really good card. It's the only reason I run Homeward Path and my Savala deck. Like, there, are, there's a reason those cards exist, those counteractions, because things like this are real threats. Mm -hmm. So if a deck isn't yes. using Gilded Drake, why? They're making... Well, I don't think every deck should use Drake. Mm -hmm. um, I do think a lot of decks, well, especially Naru, should use Drake. Yeah. It's another form of interaction. It's really good in mono blue. And it's I so mean, cheap. Against Teferi yeah. or CBT, it's not going to do anything. But I'm always seeing someone I can take on the table. For 2 CMC, it's an amazing effect. And it it's it's not difficult to counteract, yeah. but it's one of those things where it's more a nuisance than it is... I want to take your notion, Thief. Please, exactly. please. Yeah. Give me something I can use. And more often than not, these commanders, they are being ran because they are the combo piece. Mm -hmm. They enable the combo. And Gilded Drake's just going to take them. Most competent, I think, CDH decks, their commander, at least the top tier ones from what I've seen from lists, what people are playing, are ones that are the win condition in some effect. So if you can swipe that yep. and say, oh yeah, now you need to destroy this to put it back in your command zone or your graveyard. That sucks. Again, it's just a major nuisance. With yep. Savala, like, it hurts if you have to crop rotate in a homeward path. It's very good in our meta. Yeah. It's very good. Well, you know, and that's why it's it, it just depends. Because things like Goto, on the other hand, you know, he's going to win. He should be... You play him and win on that same turn. You don't want to just play him. Mm -hmm. Because if you just play him, you get Gilded Drake. But not always with Zura comes out and you have a turn in turn. Oh, yeah. You're going to say hi. I'm, I'm going to say hi. Yeah. And I'm going to take counterbalance off of him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Exactly. Oh, so <laughs> counterbalance good. that. All right. Enough with Gilded Drake. Snapcaster Mage. Woo, snappy. Now, Snapcaster Mage in most lists has came, come out? Yeah, came out? What do you mean? It's gone. It's gone. People have replaced this with Mission Briefing. Wow, well, yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. But in this deck that likes creatures on the field and creatures that we can loop in an infinite mana outlet, Snapcaster is amazing. Yeah. Imagine we have Ghostly Flicker. And we have Narameha, and we have just gone off. And we are looping islands, and we have infinite mana. We can loop Snapcaster to reuse our entire graveyard. We can so reuse... You can delve that graveyard I away. Delve that away. Yeah. But, <laughs> I mean, we can now find our cantrips. We can now find outlets that have already been used. It is really, really good in here. And I've used Mission Briefing in Naru. What do you think about it? I hated it. I'm not, I don't think Mission Briefing is a, a, a great card. It is a suitable replacement in some decks for Snapcaster. I think it's a better in most can, decks. I think the, but not both in decks here. Can, some decks can run both. I think specifically for Naru. And again, if you're going to use that illusion strategy method, you, you, you're going to want to use Snapcaster Mage. He's a good card. He's just a good. He's such a good value engine in any instance. Yeah. You know, we don't run many creatures, but when we do, they are necessary for this combo. The Alter the Brood, Essence Flux combo. Mm -hmm. Now... This has replaced Stratagem in my deck. I initially only ran the Ghostly Flicker combo, but I needed something cheaper and easy to find. Why do I like this combo? Well, the art for Essence Flux. That's yeah, cool. yeah, That's I like great. that. But Trinket Mage can find Alter of the Brood. Oh, yeah. Spellseeker can find Essence Flux. When we loop either of those, we can get a piece. In addition to that, Word of Invention that we run in this deck can find Alter of the Brood. Mm-hmm. It's very good. So if we have War of Invention and we use it as an outlet post-infinite, yeah. we can find Alter mid-combo, throw it onto the field, and now we mill everybody. Another bad thing, well, just with Essence Flux in general, is it requires a creature on the field, mm. just like Stratagem. But the way this combo works is when you have Alter and you have a creature, right? you can cast Essence Flux, Targeting the creature, and in response, flash in Narameha. 
Narumea sees Essence Flux, copies Essence Flux, and the new Essence Flux will target Narumea, blinking her infinite times because when she comes in again, she copies Essence Flux. She comes in again, she copies Essence Flux. Always copying the original. Mm -hmm. Always choosing herself. Always milling your opponent. Yeah. It's good. It's brutal. You know, I do like it because it is more easily accessible with different cards in our deck. And it synergizes quite well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One last thing about Essence Flux and Stratagem. We opted out Stratagem because it is not good outside of the combo. Essence Flux, while it's not a great card to draw on its own, it is still useful. You know, you can target your Snapcaster, you can get an additional card mm -hmm. to have flashback. You can target your Trinket Mage, now you can find your Alter the Brood, you can find your Sensei's Divine on top. It's useful. Yeah. You know, your yeah, Mana yeah. Crypt, your Fast Mana. So it is still decent outside of the combo, um, and that's why I opted it in. It's a cheaper, faster, more synergistic way to win. Exactly. And obviously you're not going to search it unless you necessarily need it. I thought it was jank. And then I played it. A lot of and people I won do. so much with it. A lot of people do. I think it's an excellent addition to this deck. It's just it's one mana. It's one blue mana. You know, I drop an altar of the brood. Nobody cares. Uh, you're not gonna. No Nobody gonna cares. Try to deal with it's that. not that good. No. But we're slowly building the pieces to eke out a win. Instead of seven mana, we only need five. Yeah. Pretty That's good. Great. Let's talk about copy artifact. Originally, I was not running this card. Why do we think it's good, Nara? Uh, it's an enchantment. Enchantments are hard to contend with, but it also copies artifacts. Like, why wouldn't you want that? So it's all about getting seven or eight mana in Armea, or five if you have the additional pieces. Copy artifact lets us stay even with the table. You know, someone has an explosive start. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use copy artifact to copy a mana rock. A good one. Mm -hmm. Not just a foul war stone. You want that soul ring? I want your grim you model. Want friend I, want, I want something good. Yeah. And... You know, more often than not, Copy Artifact has been very useful in here. I mean, everyone's board is going to consist of some form of, like, fast mana. And this is going to allow you to steal that. I mean, I can personally say, I, I use Sculpting Steel to much the same effect. And there there is better artifact removal in our meta mm -hmm. than there is enchantment removal. And at the end of the day, we need to keep up with the table. Narameha, yeah. being mono blue, falls behind very quickly. Mm -hmm. Very, yeah. very quickly. Well, this is so good, especially when you have that uh, hand we had earlier with the Sapphire Medallion. Mm -hmm. This is a one-cost like duplicate. Again, it, it's going to it's going to net you value, and hopefully, with that same turn, leave you mana available to. Oh man! If we if we stuff. copy a Sapphire Medallion, that's minus four for our combo. True. Yeah, Naru yeah, yeah. costs two blue. Um, Ghostly Flicker now costs. One generic and one blue. Yeah. Very good. Oh my god. Yeah, you can copy your own things. It's it's, it's a really fantastic card. Not a lot of decks use it. Obviously, in a mono blue deck, mm -hmm. it's an excellent utility. Is it necessary for every deck? No, but it's great in Naru. I like it a lot in here. Oh yeah. So our last card is very fringe. Yeah. And for... Oh, I never included it in Narameha, but I think it's good. Mm. I think it's good now. I don't like the transmute. I don't like to telegraph my plays. However, this automatically finds us Ghostly Flicker. Yeah. You know, I think it's decent enough to go in the deck. And when we're playing that Alter the Brood line, you know, Trinket Mage. Trinket Mage playing Drift of Phantasms, transmuting for Trinket Mage. Trinket Mage finding Alter the Brood. All we need is Essence Flux to win. You know, this can be the same way with Spellseeker. Transmuting for Spellseeker. Spellseeker finding Essence Flux. All we need is Alter the Brood to win. Back to basics we can find. Oh my Shuts gosh. down a lot. Yeah, there's plenty of utilities that you can grab with this card. It's, it's game-changing in a lot of ways, provided you have the necessary mana base to mm -hmm. actually use that transmute. And it does suck when you're broadcasting those plays. But a lot of these yeah. cards, like folks I'm trying to stop, you don't generally counter or interact with the tutor. So a tutor for a tutor that's netting you a win condition, they're probably going to wait on the win condition. And you have likely have, hopefully at this point, another mm -hmm. turn to get that to result. So Drift of Phantasms can be used so incorrectly. You do not tap out turn three for this. No. 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 Because people <laughs> win on turn three. As Mono Blue, you do not want to leave yourself open. I would not transmute Drift unless I had additional mana and interaction in my hand mm -hmm. to deal with stuff. Yeah. You know, this is telegraphing your play. But if this resolves and you get Ghostly Flicker in your hand... People now realize that you have your combos live yeah. as long as you have the prerequisite of mana. And that's when someone says windfall. Yeah, that's when everyone <laughs> says windfall. Um, 
But, Bye. <laughs> you know, people have to play a little more careful now. Yeah. Because they know at any time you can loop Ghosty Flicker and Naramea. Yeah, it's important to note that because Nara has Flash, your your win condition is at instant speed. Mm-hmm. So, so you can win pretty much any I'm time. I'm 50-50 on this card, but I have been really liking it in the list yeah. so far, just for what it um, can find. More often than not, I won't always find Tringamage and Spellseeker. I'll either go for the combo with mm-hmm. Ghosty Flicker... Or I might just get a bas- back to basics, um, yeah. and if I transmute it, I'm most likely not playing back to basics that turn. But having that in my hand and having that as a threat in a multicolor table is very good. Oh yeah, yeah. Provided you have enough three CMC cards for this transmute to actively benefit your board state, it's a good consideration. Yep. I'd say the same thing for most transmute cards because the cost of transmute, if I'm not mistaken, is usually three across the board. Yes. Um, blue, blue. So three for three for, for blue cards, yes. You know, and because like people will run in black decks, uh, your grim tutor, right? And that's just a three mana tutor, um, and you're only really looking for a certain set cards. So is it really that bad to run a transmute for three? I don't think so, particularly in this deck because it does function off of those three CMC cards. And of course, there's other three CMC cards we can be grabbing, but these are the ones that are effectively win us the game. But you know, there are times where. This card, Drift of Phantasms, is fantastic. And that would be after we have established Infinite Mana. So we have established Infinite Mana. If we use Transmute on Drift of Phantasms, we can now find Trinket Mage. Mm. Trinket Mage comes in and finds Walking Ballista. We now have an outlet. We have Infinite Mana. We Transmute Drift of Phantasms. We now use Spellseeker. What does Spellseeker find? Why don't we find Merchant Scroll? Yeah. Merchant Scroll now grabs us any instant. That's an outlet. We now have infinite mana. We transmute Drift of Phantasms. We find Blue Sun Zenith. We target ourselves. We draw our library. And then we're going to win. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. So those are our most notable inclusions as well as those three exclusions. Of course, if you look at the primer, you'll notice a couple more cantrips, a few odds and ends that are missing from mm-hmm. Justin's particular Naru deck. However... You know, he's been playing this deck for so long. Over a year now. This this has been so fine-tuned. Yeah, it's optimized, at least for our meta. And, of course, a lot of choices that you'll be making are for your own meta. I mean, I see people run Phyrexian Revoker in this. I mean, there are cards that you can opt in that will function well for this. Overall, though, I think Naramea is a pretty good deck. It's a very good budget entry-level deck. It's only one color. It doesn't use a lot of expensive lands. You know, expensive counters. Yes, you it. have expensive counters. Yeah. But I think in a slower meta, it is very good. It can withstand competitive pods. I have won a lot of Naramea. Yeah. You know, it's just when you're blitzing out wins, when you have Zer, when you have Brostorm. You need more interaction. Stampede. Can you still win? He means the stampede. Can you still win? Yes, you can. You can totally win Naramea still. But are there better decks in blue? Mm. I mean, Teferi, arguably. Yeah, Brawl. Right? What do we think of Brawl? I would rather play Naru. I like Naru. I just but like Naru because she herself is part of the combo. You yeah. just need one other card that's Ghostly Flicker, and you're, you're off. Yeah. You're yeah. so off. I agree with that. And, you know, if you guys want to check out a Brawl or talk about those lists, we can, of course, discuss them. We do have a mm-hmm. Teferi deck. Uh, you've likely, or you're likely going to see it. Uh, in round two for Savala when we do action, right? He oh, yeah. To Ferry. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, obviously, we're going to see Naru in action. She will be our highlight for the next Brew Wars. Hopefully, she will yeah. net a win for you guys to see. I hope so. I'm sure she will, and she definitely can, because we've seen it before. It's yeah. not as fringe as you might believe, and mm-hmm. I know it's not the blue deck a lot of people think of, but it's certainly a strong one, and it's I love it. very much underrepresented. You need a few more cards to really break her. Yeah, I, I mean, need some more outlets, you know? Uh, new sets. And guys, of course, uh, I've been mentioning this in the comment section down below, but this show is going to be a, essentially an encyclopedia for you, for all the commanders we've listed. So yeah. in the months to come, when new sets come out, there are going to be update videos letting Bottom you guys horizons. know. Please, give me something. Fringe for Narmaya. Exactly. Like, give us any more solutions to benefit these decks we've discussed. And of course, we'll let you know what those solutions are mm-hmm. and what decks they would fit into for you. So you can make better decisions when you're making those purchases. And hopefully, we'll have an affiliate with Card Kingdom at that point. I can make money off you suckers. <laughs> I would not put that. I'm I don't, totally I don't think I put that in the video. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. But we're not. We're, so- we're not affiliated with anything at this point. Ourselves ourselves. And Miller, they contacted us. (laughs) Can you believe that?
Watch yeah. Brew Wars. If you haven't checked out Brew Wars, it's our version of a gameplay. You yeah, like you know, that. We definitely want to do that twice a month, Brew Wars. I agree. We need more good videos. I and better mics. Uh, it's not even the mic. I know. <laughs> forgive me. I forgot to put the pop filter on that mic. Not again. It's going to alleviate yeah. all of those issues. But let us know what you think about this video, what you want to see moving forward. I hope you enjoy the content here. Again, my name is Patrick Marlette. He is Justin Narmea. Rodriguez. Yeah, I he did is well. Narmea. I did well. Uh, building, building a new deck. Building a new deck. This is the first time in a year that I'm building a new deck. I'm very excited. So that's why you see different colors still used. Just wait. Next Brew Wars. It's going to be tasty. It's going to be so tasty. Less French but so tasty.